In today's presentation, I would like to share my personal reading notes uh, for the ResNet. So the ResNet is a 2015 paper by Kai Min He and his colleague. Um, the original name is Deep Residual Learning for Image Recognition. This paper is quite important because uh, it was a winner for the ImageNet in 2015, and also it was the CVPR paper of that year. So let's get started. So what is the problem that um, the ResNet trying to solve in 2015 is the degradation problem. If we recap um, the, the competition of ImageNet, we know that there's a trend um, when the architectures of the neural network goes deeper, it tends to re, uh, learn a better representation of the problem because it has a bigger receptive field and uh, it can learn higher uh, representations of the specific task. However, when Kai Ming He and his colleague trying to experiment with the deeper layers, they see the behavior in the left uh, image here. So you can see that there is a 20 layers of a specific architecture network, and there is a deeper one, which is 56 layers. And you can clearly see that both in training and testing arrow, it goes up. So this is kind of uh, not the problem for overfitting because we understand the overfitting is happens when the training error is quite low, but it, when it goes to the testing, the testing error goes high, and that is a problem for the overfitting. So clearly, this degradation behavior is not the problem from the overfitting. Okay, so we tend to think about is that a problem for uh, a gradient vanish uh, problem, and um, also. The, the, during that year, that batch normalization is already addressed inside um, the gradient vanish problem. So kind of this is not also the reason behind um, why this behavior happens. So there must be a more fundamental reason that the deeper layers of the neural network cannot perform a better performance. And if we stay back to think about from the first principle, the whole mathematic behind the neural network, we understand that the neural network is just trying to learn a general representation from the input to the output. So it's a mapping functions in between. And then if we think about the deeper neural network, it's actually um, the superset, uh, which means in the other way, the shallow network is the subset for the counterpart of the deeper, uh, deeper neural network, which means that the deeper neural network can learn a more sophisticated representation, a mapping function between input and output, and the shallow uh, neural network is just a subset of those solutions. So there must, be, there must be a way that the deeper neural network won't be worse than the performance of the shallow uh, network because it's from a mathematic per perspective they are just a, a, a superset uh, relationship. So then the problem, the problem uh, Kai Ming He they and their teams trying to present is that the degradation problem suggests that the solver might have a difficulty to learn approximating identity ma uh, mapping by multiple nonlinear layers. And let me try to explain uh, what does it mean. So if we think about the, if we make an example right now, a deeper neural network now, if we have 50 layers and this shallow network has 20 layers, so we can actually construct the deeper neural network based on the shallow network. So the, the first 20 layer is from the shallow network and the rest 30 layers is actually identity mapping. So which means that this deeper neural network will be exactly the same behavior, or if you put it into the input, it should be exactly the same behavior as the shallow uh, neural network because they are the, the rest of the layer is actually identity. Identity means you multiply anything is yourself still. So the rest of 20, uh, 30 layers will be the same. So this is from mathematic perspective, right? which means that the current architecture of the neural network cannot achieve this behavior, which means that there is some difficulties to learn identity mapping from the current uh, 
neural network architecture. So that is why we need a new proposal. We need a new way. Um, this Kaiming Hub proposed the deep residual learning framework. So we need to talk about the fundamental building block, which is called residual block. And that is trying to learn the identity mapping. The essential idea is to learn identity mapping um, from the input to the output. So if you see the um, figure structure here that we have x, and then usually we have some mapping functions, which is fx, and that will be the output. And then there's another um, convolutional operations and go deeper and deeper. But this residual block has one shortcut connections, which is here, and that is the identity mapping we are talking about here. So the shortcut connection is actually just the identity functions because it's just uh, connect originally from the input directly to the output. So if we think about what it, why it called residual, here I just I just put it all the naming um, that show on the paper here for the edge of x is called the desired mapping. You can call it a, in the paper it also says it's a original mapping or the output. And the fx here is the residual block and also uh, it called residual mapping, which is exactly this one here. And then the x here is the identity mapping, which also is the input. So we know that the desired mapping, the output, is equal to the fx here, this path plus the identity um, path. So that will be fx plus x. And then we can do the f of, f of x will be equal to, you just put the this x here, f of x will equal to the h, uh, h of x minus x. And that is exactly the output minus input. And that is why it's called residual. So the assumption here is the output and input, in order to do this operation, you need to be the same dimension. This is some uh, some small details later we will see. Okay, so which means you need to have the same convolutional uh, operation. You cannot have a different pattern, otherwise the, the size will shrink and then you cannot use the pooling inside the residual block there. And when you think about the edge case, here's the most important thing. When you think about the edge case, which we talked about before, if there is a deep neural network and then we're using um, the shallow neural network as the base and then the rest of the network we we want it to be identical. So that is exactly the extreme case here. If the desired mapping of h of x is identical as the input, then f of x will be zero out, which means that this time the desired mapping is equal to the input. And that is exactly what we, what we want to achieve, the identi identity mapping. So just to recap, to bring in the architecture of the residual block is trying to solve the previous problem we faced before. The nonlinear layer stacking is hard to learn the identity mapping. By having this shortcut connection, that's the essential uh, message that inside this paper, by having these shortcut connections within this residual block uh, architectures that the neural network now is able to learn identity mapping. So there's a three benefits um, from the residual block. The first one is it is easier to learn the residual mapping, which is f of x here, than the original mapping, the desired mapping directly, uh, which is h of x here. The second thing is because of this shortcut connections, the x is actually identity. So there is no additional parameters introduced by this technique because actually underlying the, um, the memory is point to the same location. And the third one is it allows now the neural network goes deeper because this shortcut connections actually helps the gradient flow to flow back to the earlier layers and that also eliminate the problem that the vanish um, gradient problem here. So th this is kind of the three good benefits here. And we're going to see some experiment here. Um, so in the in here that they're trying to compare with a 
they call plain architecture. Plain architecture is just simply the convolutional operations without the residual block. And then here is uh, with uh, residual enabled. So you can see here, there is a shortcut connection here. And when you do the implementation, you just make sure uh, the dimension should be the same because you path through those convolutional operations and you need to make sure that your um, tensor in this case can be add uh, together. So the dimension needs to be same. This is just a small uh, tricks that you need to make sure when you do the coding here. So the result is turns out that uh, we remember at the beginning we talked about when the layers goes deeper and it actually triggered the problem, which is exactly shown here uh, in the plan structures. When the layer goes deeper in the 34 layers, actually the performance is worse than the shallow counterpart because it's hard to land the identity mapping here. And when you add the residual block, which is a resonate um, prefix here, and if you add more layers now, because as we said from the first principle, the deeper layer is the superset of the shallow layers. So they should be have the same capability to learn more complicated representation. And here it's exactly showing that message. Now our 34 layers performs better than 18 layers because the worst, I will be the same as you. I will be all the identity matrix since the 19 layers on, but this is not the case. We learn even more things. So this is uh, from the math perspective, this is what we want to achieve. Okay, so you can see some arrow, top one arrow uh, comparison here. And if we go even more deeper, they uh, experiment up to ResNet 152 layers that can achieve um, the, the error rates 4.49%. And I remember that is the first time there's a neural network architecture can surpass the human capability of doing the image recognition, and that is exactly the ResNet. Okay, just try to recap. The essential message for um, the ResNet is to bring up um, a residual block, and the essential idea for that is they argue that the previous architectures, it's hard to learn identity mapping. By having the residual block, by having these shortcut connections, you are able to learn identity metrics and that fulfill the mass perspective that the deeper neural network is the superset for the shallow neural network so it can learn a more sophisticated representations compared to the shallow counterpart. That's all for the presentation for this uh, Resonate 15 paper. Thank you.